So the ingredients in it is there's spent barley, there's wheat flour, there's quinona, quinoa, quinona, quinona. Happy Over Wednesday! I am drinking just a bog standard pale ale really. It's just one that I've got in the keg. Um, we've just been waiting for it to clear up. Looks like it's clearing up now. I'll um, start force carbonating it, get a little bit of bubble in it because it's pretty flat. Well, it's not flat, it just hasn't got a lot of head retention sort of in it at the moment. It hasn't carved up fully. But it looks clear, it's clear enough. You can see me through that. It's funny, there's lots of people on Facebook showing the pictures of the clarity of their beer. It's like this little competition that's sort of going on. Anyway, this tastes okay. Now last week um, in my homebrew Wednesday I talked about um, diacetyl and uh, all the comments uh, that came through on that video um, it was really really interesting so it's like let's talk about acetaldehyde as well so tonight I'm going to talk about acetaldehyde um, probably next week I'm going to talk about something totally different actually I've got something really interesting for next week but we'll tell you about that next week um, so basically there are there's three off flavours that screw up us homebrewers. Diacetyl, we got that covered in the last week's video. Go and check it out. There'll be a link at the end of this video. Um, dimethyl sulfide, sorry, DMS. Um, that's really easy to get rid of. Boil the shit out of your beer. Um, dimethyl sulfide has a half-life of about 40 minutes or something like that. So every 40 minutes it reduces by 50%. So do a 90 minute boil and you're down to, I don't know, Calculate my hair, 12 and a half percent left in your beer. Um, but take the lid off your kettle. It is really volatile and it dissipates up in the steam coming up, and that's how you get rid of it. If you leave a lid on, it's going to hit, condense, come back down again. So that keeps DMS in your beer. So if you have DMS in your beer, you're trying to work out what it is, and you have a lid on your kettle, that's what it is. Or you're not boiling long enough. Simple fixes. But tonight I'm going to talk about acetaldehyde. <clears throat> That's the green apple flavour. Um, the green apple smell. And it's a complex smell. Um, it is, it's a precursor to quite a few other sort of chemical compounds, so it changes quite a bit. It has some interesting flavours. It has um, some ethanol flavours in it. Um, it has acidic acid, um, like the vinegar flavours. So you can sort of smell green apple and then into... Um, cider vinegar sort of aromas and things like that with acetaldehyde and at varying amounts in a beer as well and some you taste more and some you smell more um, I think I said a while back um, that it's <clears throat> it is one of the really hard ones to pick up and it helps to do homebrew tastings with a lot of other people and talk about it um, and that's what sort of led me into talking about these off flavours um, is that at a homebrew tasting Aidan from Balins Brewery who's got a you can detect acetaldehyde 500 meters. Um, I'm using him to coach my detection of acetaldehyde so that if he can sense it, I can sense it as well. So I can work out what that flavor association is for me. Um, so it's really helped in um, my palate and being able to pick up acetaldehyde by you know, talking to somebody else that can, that can pick it up. Um, but anyway, what is acetaldehyde? Acetaldehyde is an important factor in beer making. If we didn't have acetaldehyde in beer, we would not have beer, pretty much. But you didn't think that, eh? Um, but yeast, when you start fermenting, it produces acetaldehyde. And acetaldehyde is a precursor for ethanol. So without any acetaldehyde, we haven't got any booze in our beer. Because that's part of the chemical reaction. The yeast makes the acetaldehyde and then that is on transformed into ethanol. Um, so when you end up with acetaldehyde in your beer, in your fermenter, in your primary fermentation, it's because the yeast has produced all this acetaldehyde and then got to sleep and gone, ah, should I really convert it? Nah, fuck it, leave it in there. Um, so it hasn't finished the job of converting that acetaldehyde into ethanol. So you get left with traces of acetaldehyde. To fix it, you should um, pitch more yeast, more viable yeast, have better temperature control to make sure that yeast is still active all the way through, that it has the nutrients. So 
it's really about making sure that that fermentation period is working all the way through while that yeast is active and the yeast isn't dying off like you've heated it up and accidentally got it too hot or too cold and it's gone to sleep or or there wasn't enough yeast in there to handle the um, original gravity you can get rid of it it does disappear in your fermenter but it can come back because acetaldehyde not only does it create ethanol but ethanol creates acetaldehyde through an oxidization process complicated stuff eh? so you need oxygen in your fermenter when the yeast first goes in there so you've got healthy yeast you need aeration so the yeast is going yep I've got some oxygen to eat to start producing these acetaldehydes and everything like this that I then go on to produce the ethanols with by that stage the oxygen has been used up there is a CO2 layer that's blanketed the top of your fermenter to stop oxygen from coming down because any further oxygen introduction will start to reconvert that ethanol back into acetaldehyde again so once you're fermented and you've got rid of it you've got to be careful not to oxygenate um, racking into secondary, putting it into a keg and all those things where there's the chance of oxygen getting to your beer is a chance for that ethanol to be reconverted back into acetaldehyde. You may find that when you were bottle conditioning um, you had less acetaldehyde than when you moved to kegs. Um, the reason being is that when you bottle condition there's a bit of suspended yeast in there any oxygen that was in there that created a little bit of acetaldehyde that active yeast if it still has some food to eat will reconvert that acetaldehyde back into ethanol again and it sort of cleans itself up. An interesting thing, when we drink beer, the ethanol in it, the good stuff <clears throat> that goes to our liver, our liver converts it back to acetaldehyde and then on to acetic acids and all the other things that your body needs. But one of the, um, one of the enzymes that's used for converting the ethanol back into acetaldehyde in our liver is also affects our brain chemistry and that's what gives us a hangover. That's about it for acetaldehyde. It's a very important part of fermentation. Um, if we didn't have it we wouldn't have, we wouldn't have ethanol. Once we have ethanol we've got to stop that ethanol in the beer from oxidizing and reconverting back to acetaldehyde. Um, so best practices in your fermenting. Make sure that you're airtight, you're not introducing any additional air in there. When you're transferring over to secondary, make sure there's no air coming in there. It's all about that contamination with oxygen in your beer. When you're bottling, make sure that you've got the least amount of headspace possible. Um, if you want to test it out, do a bit of bottling and do one bottle and only half fill it and cap it up and do another bottle and fill it all the way and leave it. And put those aside, put those two bottles aside on the same place um, for a month. And then crack them open and taste the two of them. The one that was half full, that had oxygen in the bottle, will have acetaldehyde in it. Most probably. The other one shouldn't. But yeah, that's a little test you can do to see how acetaldehyde is affected by oxygen. But anyway, I hope that was uh, handy. Alrighty, my wife got me these. These are mash tun crackers. And they're actually made with a spent grain from Tuatara Pilsner. Look at that. Now lots of people do stuff with their spent grain. Uh, most of the time they make dog, bis dog biscuits. I think Garage Project um, have dog biscuits um, for sale in their brewery. But these ones, you can see them. These are the best spent grain crackers I've ever had. They're bloody toasty. So anyway, the ingredients in here, there's spent barley, there's wheat flour, there's quinoa, there's rice bran oil, there's olive oil, there's salt and poppy seeds. And it looks like they're squashed really, really hard because they're really quite firm. Like they've really compressed um, the mix together to make a really nice firm cracker. Bloody good. Anyway, that's enough from me. Um, as I said, next week I've got something really exciting. Should I say that? Because if I don't do it, it won't be that exciting, will it? Yeah, I'm going to do it. That'd be good. Also, I have a, um, an interview that I did with Shiggy from um, Funk Estate. They did it. 
I'm pretty sure we can do this. I did it a while ago, I just haven't got around to getting it done. Um, busy, busy, busy life. So, I am currently working on that as well to get that out the door too. So there will be a little bit of an interview about how Shiggy, um, one of the three people in Funk Estate, how he started brewing and how he got to where he got to where he got to. Got to where he got to where he got to. Yeah, it made sense to me in my head. Right. Anyway, cheers. Have yourself another one.